Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tango Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 6 december 2015. Dit is het Brutte van zondag. Vandaag hebben we weer Contestia zoals gebruikelijk. Daarnaast ga ik proberen op dezelfde wijze als gisteren een afbeelding uit te zenden met 8 PSK 1000 bij 1750 Hz. Today we have one item of news in Dutch. After that we have several items of news in English. Vandaag stond er een artikel over de verdeling van de middengolffrequenties op de site radio.nl. De overheid wil na 2017 geen hoogvermogenvergunningen voor de middengolf meer uitgeven wegens gebrek aan belangstelling. Momenteel kijkt men naar de uitgifte van zogenaamde LPAM-vergunningen, laagvermogensvergunningen voor de middengolf. Bij LPAM wordt gedacht aan vermogens van tussen de 1 watt en 100 watt ERP en mogelijk ook zenders van enkele kilowatt. Bij de kleinste zender spreekt men van buurtradio of schoolradio zoals in de VS al mogelijk is. Een van de voorstellen is om middengolfzenders tot een vermogen van 1 watt ERP in Nederland vrij te stellen. Momenteel loopt er van AT een consultatie. Geïnteresseerden kunnen tot 11 december hun mening hierover doorgeven aan agentschap Telecom. Waarschijnlijk komen we morgen nog een keer terug op dit onderwerp. The rest of our show is in English. Today we have Contestia, just like we had last week with 8 tones and a central frequency of 355 Hz. Other parameters can be found on www.papaalpha0echotangoecho.nl. In addition to that, today we will try to send a small picture with 8 PSK 1000 at 1750 Hz. 8 PSK 1000 at 1750 Hz. Right now we have some news from all over the world. From Australia, this is VK1WIA, hamstrung by high-rises. The Times of India reports on new skyscrapers in Kolkata blocking crucial radio waves that come in handy during natural disasters when regular communication channels are disrupted. Ham radio enthusiasts have warned that the vulnerability caused by the fast-changing topography of Kolkata needs to be addressed immediately to ensure the city is prepared for emergencies. As high-rises mushroom at a rapid pace, ham radio operators will increasingly find it difficult to communicate within the city. This problem can only be resolved by setting up a strong repeater atop a tall building to relay the signals generated in the 60 to 70 kilometer aerial radius, say experts. A repeater will lift the signal above tall buildings and retransmit it, said Amateur Radio Society of India General Secretary Gopal Madhavan, Victor Uniform 2, Golf Mike November. We will request the government for help to fund a repeater station and a small office. Resumption of amateur radio 70 years ago. The return of amateur radio after World War II took place slowly, and soon international contacts were being made on the airwaves. The WIA historian Peter Wolfenden, VK3RV, has found that Australia's Postmaster General's Department began reissuing licenses in December 1945. Research of the WIA Historical Archive has found that the first allocations released were 28 to 29 MHz, 50 to 54 MHz, 166 to 170 MHz and 1345 to 1425 MHz or as said in the day, megacycles. Amateur radio resumed in many countries at about the same time. It had been firstly banned by the British Commonwealth and Europe, and then most countries during the war. The Postmaster General's call book in July 1946 listed some 1,590 radio amateurs, then still called experimental wireless station licences. By December 1914, a 66% increase, but they were now called Amateur Wireless Station Licences. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. One of the duties of the Australian Communications and Media Authority is to find the source of signals that cause interference. At this time of the year, the ACMA field staff are certain to be called to interference to television reception caused by cheap LED Christmas lights. Unsuspecting consumers buy poorly designed LEDs for a festive display or to illuminate an area, but these can also emit interfering radio signals and disrupt television viewing and digital radio reception. Another reoccurring problem is thrown away emergency position indicating radio beacons. From the Melbourne ACMA office, Andy Brackmanis has even found himself deep in a rubbish tip looking for an errant EPIRB. Improperly stored EPIRBs can activate if they fall or are knocked, while other irresponsible people discard old EPIRBs as rubbish instead of returning it to a retailer for recycling. 
Rewind. History of electronics in Australia. An online documentary about electronics in Australia over the past 50 years is a good start at recording history, but it has further development possibilities. Called State of Electronics, it features interviews of some industry professionals. It starts in the telegraphy era. Then, the Lee de Forest's triode development, radio broadcasting and later television. Transistors transformed things to solid state, followed by integrated circuits, miniaturisation and the space race of the late 60s and 70s. The digital era is all around us now, but it began with electronic calculators, computers and microcontrollers. Whether you want to look at history or you may like to contribute some information, please visit stateofelectronics.com or search YouTube for State of Electronics. I'm Brian, VK3GR. From the headquarters of the American Radio Relay League in Newington, Connecticut, this is ARRL Audio News. WX4NHC, the amateur radio station at the National Hurricane Center in Miami, will take part in Skywarn Recognition Day on Saturday, December 5th. The annual on-the-air event gets underway at zero hours UTC and concludes at 2359 UTC. WX4NHC will be active from 1400 until 2300 UTC. The Hurricane Center Ham Station has participated in every Skywarn Recognition Day since its inauguration 16 years ago. WX4NHC will take advantage of the event for operator training. We will try to stay on the recognized hurricane watch net frequency of 14.325 MHz most of the time, and we will announce when we QSY, said Assistant WX4NHC Coordinator Julio Ripple, WD4R, at the NHC. WX4NHC will also be active on a wide variety of bands and modes from HF through UHF. Co-sponsored by ARRL and the National Weather Service, Skywarn Recognition Day pays tribute to amateur radio operators for the vital public service they perform. Registration is still open for stations planning to participate from a National Weather Service forecast office. A list of NWS participating offices is on the NWS Skywarn Recognition Day webpage. During Skywarn Recognition Day, amateur stations exchange contact information with as many National Weather Service-based stations as possible. The Volunteer Skywarn program comprises nearly 290,000 trained severe weather spotters, many of them radio amateurs, who identify severe storms and provide NWS forecasts with reports of local weather conditions during severe weather events.